this video, we will be going over how to backup and restore your cron tab on Linux. So the cron tab is a really cool, let me pull it up here actually, I've got a few, more than a few windows open. There we go. The cron tab is a file on your Linux system that allows you to specify commands or scripts to be run on a particular schedule. And I won't be covering how to use it in this video, but it's a really, really useful tool to get a brief overview of everything you programmed your system to do. It also means that you can run these scripts in any language you want. They could be Python, they could be Shell, which is what you normally use. It's worth noting that the, little, the syntax of cron is very obtuse, so I highly recommend you use the website crontab.guru to double check when you have configured your cron jobs to run. But let's say that you're getting into DevOps and infrastructure as code and you want to still use the cron tab, you want to be able to back it up and then have your latest version automatically restored every time you redeploy a server. That's what we're going to be covering today. So there's more than one way to do this depending on which cron manager your system has. Uh, this is my local machine running Arch, and this is my VPS running Ubuntu. So if we do a status on the Ubuntu machine, you can see that it's running cron service. Whereas the Arch machine, that's cron, cron completes to crony, which is a different cron manager that has a different file structure, which means that backing things up will be different. Now, eventually, I believe Ubuntu is going to switch to using the same cron manager that is currently used in Arch. But until that happens, you need to, well, you have different options in different places. So the way that crony works, and the simplest way things work, is you go to, I think it's var spool cron. Yeah. And in this case, I have a cron tab as root and a con cron tab as my user, which is Connor. And if we cat this text file called Connor, it's the exact same file that we get if we issue a cron tab tag e. And that's useful to know because you see that when you issue cron tab tag e, it creates a temp file over here. So it can be difficult for you to tell exactly where your file is. And the same would be the case if we did the root one, which just has some comments added by a program, and then I've since uninstalled that program, so there's nothing valuable in the root cron tab, but you can see it is a separate file. Now, because these are just files, you can add them to your dot files management, your dot files management system. I don't believe that these can be symlinks, but if you use a git bare repo to do something like add a file, hmm. So actually, I'm not sure. Oh, I see the problem, I see the problem. Um, this gets beyond the scope of this video, but my, my git bare repo setup um, doesn't understand this file location. So in order for me to track these files as a git bare repo, automatic restore would probably mess with their permissions. And the same is also true on Ubuntu. If I go into var pool cron, you can see I don't have these two files. Instead, I have a cron tabs file, which is owned by root, meaning that I can't ls the cron tab even though my user, Connor, has his cron tab in this folder. So I have to switch to the root user. I have to remember the right password. And then if we look in here, you can see there's a cron tab for Connor and a cron tab for root. And, but even though Connor owns this file, the, the group is cron tab, and um, it can be very difficult to work with these files directly because your restore script would have to manually set the permissions correctly on every single file. And then of course, if Ubuntu changes its cron manager, which it probably will do in future releases, the file structure might be different. It might be closer to the way it is on Arch. So there's a way to get around all of this and just to back up your cron tabs, no matter how your system is configured. And the way you do that is you can issue a cron tab tag L to dump all the text in your cron tab. And then you can use some Linux shell magic to redirect all of this echoed text into a cron tab dot back file, or you can call it whatever you want. It is just a text file. So if I then edit my um, my existing cron tab and I make some errors or something, ah, uh, this is one reason why you want to uh, <laughs> yeah. You want to retry the same edit? Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons you want to use your cron tab tacky instead of editing these files directly is it will check your, your um, syntax. But in this case, I just commented out the line. I deleted the line. There was no syntax error, but I did uh, mess up my cron tab in some way. Well, I can just run the cron tab command, and then as the first argument, the backup file. You don't need any command line switches. You just need to specify the backup file. And now, if I edit my cron tab, it's got the old one. 
and so you can probably already see where this is going. You can write an Ansible playbook. We're looking right here right now at an Ansible role, which is called by my main VPS playbook. One of the things that it does is it clones and checks out my configs, which uh, deploys from a private Git repo my configs for the root user and for the, the pseudo user, which in my case is just named Connor. And uh, so one of the things that this Ansible role does, and all this code is available on my GitHub, is it restores the root cron tab by looking at this file, which is just stored in the user's home folder, and it's called crontab.back. And then uh, this command here, run as root, will restore the cron tab, just like I showed in the video. Now, to do it as the pseudo user, you need to do something a bit more complex. Because what we have here, let me close that so you can see a bit more of my code. Ansible can only be run as the configured user, which in my case is the Ansible user, or the root user. You can't run it as a third user called Connor, which is what I want to do. So I have this task. Oh, this is the wrong task. This is the, the task that is relevant. I, I issue become yes, meaning that this switch is to the root user. But then I specified the become method as sudo with these flags. And it's not important why those flags are necessary for this video, but I, I specify those flags. And then as the root user, I run this shell script. And this shell script runs sudo again and switches to the sudo user, in which case this is Connor. So the way that this works is Ansible goes in as Ansible, sudos into root, runs a script as root, which sudos down into the Connor user and runs these commands as the Connor user, which then allows me to run that same command that we've seen to restore the, con the cron tab. So finally, to prove all of this works, I have a local Ubuntu VM, which is not currently running. In fact, let me restore it to the state to mimic. Nope, that was the wrong button. Let me restore it to a state that mimics a default cloud server where the only account is the root account, and then your cloud provider specified your password. And then my Ansible playbook will set up the Ansible user and the Connor user and everything that I want. And one of the things that it will do is it will restore the cron tabs that I have stored in my dot .files repo. So now that that server is done booting, I can SSH as the root user, specify what I use, as my default root password. And um, if we look at my cron tab, uh, then there, if we look at my cron tab, this is the default cron tab. And I have a custom cron tab that I want to deploy along with all of my other bits of code. So if I switch over to Ansible and I run things as the Ansible user on my control node, which in this case is my laptop, and then let me verify that I've got the right machine. Yeah, this is going to go out to the main VPS, but for demonstrations, I just want it to go to the Ubuntu test VM. Then I run the playbook, and we'll wait here for it to finish. Okay, you can see it just ran the various roles to clone down my configs as root, check out and restore, and then the same thing as my sudo user. Now it's configuring the web server, because it's just replicating what I have on my main VPS. And then, uh, this whole thing here is, is its own thing. Basically, I have it reboot the server only if the automatic updates that it ran require a reboot, which in this case they didn't. So it, the way I wrote the code, it generates an error, but then it just skips that error, and if there's no error, then it reboots. And so now all of that has been customized meaning that, well, I can no longer SSH as root. I have to SSH as my normal user, which in my case is Connor. All the SSH keys are already configured for me. It says uh, VPS because the host name was changed to VPS, but this is the Ubuntu test VM. And if I issue, well, we were looking at roots cron tab earlier. So if I then look at the roots cron tab, it's a different cron tab. It's still just comments because I'm still building out this server, but you can see it's different comments, which were restored from my GitHub repo according to the Ansible code that I demonstrated before. So this is how you can backup and restore cron tabs automatically on your Linux servers using a tool like Ansible and tracking the changes in the cron tab with Git.